All right, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics and it's here. The polls are open. I've already voted. The rest of you sort yourselves out and sort your friends and family out as well. A poll suggests 47% of people think that a polling card is good enough ID for voting. No, it's not. So maybe half the people you know are not going to be taking the right ID. Check the approved list. Link in the description below. Check people you know as well. But that out of the way, at this point, there's like 20 hours before you will know the results for certain. However, I know you're all ravenous wolves with the patience of a kid at Christmas. You can't wait 20 hours, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go over the main points from the two key MRP polls, Salvation and YouGov, and then once the polls close this evening, I'll do a stream at 10 p.m. UK time where we can check out the exit poll, which will be released at that point. Exit polls have been really good over the last few elections. So although there might be extra pressures this year, it'd be worth looking at. But that's for later. For now, we have the final MRP polls and I'm going to pick out Salvation and YouGov. Both of these pollsters have won accolades for their work in the past, in 2017 most especially. There's also a massive difference between the two. Salvation is by far and away the most exciting. If, like me, you're looking forward to a Labour government, as well as wanting to see the Liberal Democrats lead the opposition. However, being honest, the Salvation poll is like, it's really far out there. If it turns out to be even close to accurate, pretty much every other pollster is going to look a little bit silly. Now, I will caveat with this with the fact that, as I've been saying throughout this campaign, in this election, there are a lot of seats which could be decided by very fine margins, way more than you normally get, possibly even more than has ever been the case since universal suffrage, at least. But anyway, what is it Salvation have predicted? I hear you say, well, calm down. Their, their median result shows Labour in 484 seats. The Conservatives on 64, the Lib Dems on 61. Now, all very interesting, but well outside the expectations of other pollsters. I will also point out that Salvation themselves have said they don't expect this seat tally to be true. They think the level of uncertainty is that Labour seat tally could be out like, like 15. They just don't know up or down. However, I, I mean, I think everyone has to say they've probably overbaked this. It'd be quite spectacular if they haven't, but they, they probably have. Not just because it's an outlier compared to the others either. In reality, I would pay more attention to YouGov. Uh, I mean, they've tended to be the ones I've promoted as a good bet throughout the duration of this channel anyway. They do a lot of good work. And as I've repeatedly noted in the past, it's the only pollster that, to my mind, really shows an awareness of major errors like false recall. Now, the YouGov results are much more low-key. 431 seats for Labour, 102 for the Conservatives, 72 for the Lib Dems. Now, that's records all around, by the way. That would be the most seats Labour have ever won, the fewest seats the Conservatives have ever won, and the most the Lib Dems have won since being the Lib Dems. I mean, that's not counting the long distance past of the Liberal Party, but that was not quite the same. Now, yes, yes, down you ravenous walls. Records they may well be, but that still puts the Tories on course for leading the opposition. This is no good. Now, though remember that these seat values are medians of a model. There is uncertainty, and within that likely uncertainty, if the Tories finished on the lower end of YouGov's expectations, and the Lib Dems finished on the upper end, and if the Tories are going to finish on the lower end, there's a good chance the Lib Dems do finish on the upper end. So it's not like having, having to rely on two things happening at once. Then the Lib Dems take second spot. So YouGov is giving the... Even though it, you know, I think, oh, you know, it doesn't sound like it, the Conservatives are going to get too many seats. YouGov is absolutely giving the green light for this to happen if people want to make it happen today. And if you're thinking, well, this seems unlikely, we're hoping for a result at the upper end of expectations. No, you would be wrong. The results of the 2019 general election were at the upper end of expectations for the Tories. It's absolutely no reason why this could not be the case the other way around this year. Remember, we're talking about the upper end of realistic scenario, not like far out there. It's entirely possible. But you have to vote for it. You have to encourage others to vote for it. You know, check out stopthetories.vote. Make Everyone you know do the same, if they're willing, obviously, don't force them. If you're in one of the 80 key tactical voting seats, link in the description below, be especially motivated to uh, encourage people into voting because those are the seats which will be the difference between where on YouGov's distribution the final results fall. 
set out as early as you can because queues might be a thing. Queues could be worse this year if, you know, there's an extra thing. People having to check voter ID. People having to go, oh, I didn't know I needed it, but they might have it on them or they might not. There's going to be extra faff at the polling station this year. Don't waste time umming and ahhing on the ballot paper. Other people need that pencil. Get your vote worked out in advance, preferably on stopthetories.vote. Go out, get your ballot paper, put your cross in the right box, post it, and walk out of the station, head held high, dreaming of the way Liz Truss or Kemi Badnock or Robert Jenrick or even Rishi Sunak are going to have to hastily rewrite their speech as the returning officer tells them, no, you haven't won. Why did you think you would have? They become the latest Michael Portillo. And, oh, do you like train journeys? Over the past couple of weeks, the story of the MRP polls has been one of, look, the Tories are, on the balance of probability, going to finish second but with very few safe seats. And with each new round of MRP polls, the number of seats that the Tories can be confident about has diminished. And if you wanted a bit of copium, here it is. MRP field work takes a good couple of weeks at least. And if you're seeing a pattern of more tactical voting working against the Tories over the course of the campaign, then it is possible that even the very final MRPs may be downplaying the level of tactical voting which may occur. Now, if I know this, then of course the experts producing these models know this as well, so they will have taken account of it. But I've also been saying recently, most pollsters have been applying some manual levers to their models in order to keep a lid on expectations. They've sort of looked at results and gone, mm, sure, that looks a bit too out there. Let's just adjust that. So there's every chance that most pollsters, including YouGov, have tried to take a conservative view of their data in more ways than one. You know, it could be that Servation just decided, you know what, let's remove this manual lever and see what happens, just for a laugh. They're, they're really going for major cred points if it turns out the polling world has been unnecessarily hesitant. But the take home from these MRP polls are that the Tories are going to have a historically bad day but just how bad is down to fine margins. The Tories could win 40 seats and you would not be able to say the pollsters got it wrong. They could win 140 seats and you would still say that's in line with polling. That is the spread of uncertainty there. On more than enough seats to make the difference between the Tories getting away with what is merely their worst ever result and ending up with the utter humiliation of being like, you know, a dozen MPs behind the Lib Dems. And this has been the pattern emerging for the past few weeks. It's just become more and more likely as we've got close to polling day, for example, the number of undecided voters has diminished as more people have made up their minds. Many of them will still be making up their minds today. You know, we just can't say, we can't say that there's the evidence that the probability has tipped over 50% for the Lib Dems to be second, but it has got closer and closer. It's like it's like a not evil Brexit referendum. You know, when Leave were just gaining in the polls, and people say, oh, Remainder ahead. Yeah, yeah, but Leave are gaining in the polls, gaining on the polls with a trajectory all the way to the day itself, when the stars aligned and boom. In the case of the Brexit referendum, it was less the stars aligning, more Russian bots and Cambridge Analytica. But it can be voters deciding that the Tories deserve to be sat at the back with the DUP today instead. And just like that, we get a government that gets the country back on track. We get an opposition that actually wants things to be better. And the Tories can enjoy their complete meltdown with all of their potential leadership contenders looking for a job elsewhere. Happy days. But there we are. Those are my thoughts. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe for further content and click the like button. You can also sign up for memberships if you'd like to support the channel further. Thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.